Let's bring in our senior economics reporter, Steve Leisman, with more color on the nominee, Steve. And that question around independence, you know, Judy Shelton was, was long time during the Obama administration calling for higher interest rates. And then in 2016, she changed her tune. But, but a lot of economists changed their tune. So how big of a deal is that? Um, I think it's a big deal. And, and I want to get, uh, Sarah, to some controversy around comments made yesterday by Fed Chairman Jay Powell about whether he meant to suggest he would endorse or support the nomination of Judy Shelton. People familiar with Powell's thinking say that would be a misinterpretation of his remarks. Now, here's part of the exchange yesterday between Powell and South Dakota Republican Senator Mike Rounds. It's fair to say that you can have people from varying points of view that can have very lively discussions and yet, at the end of the day, still be a part of a very strong team. Absolutely. I really think it just makes you stronger. I do. I mean, I, I feel that way. And, of course, I, we've had plenty of dissent at the Fed yeah. over the years. Here's how Rounds, a Shelton supporter on Squawk Box, Squawk Box this morning, interpreted Powell's comments. She will bring a rather diverse background and a different way of looking at some things, and I think that's healthy on the board. In fact, I asked uh, the chairman yesterday about groupthink, and he clearly wants a diverse group of people on, on the board with him. He's not afraid of that. One person I spoke with who's familiar with uh, Powell's thing said it would be hard to imagine Powell supporting Shelton, given her economic and monetary policy views. This person also doubts Powell would criticize Shelton. Sarah? Yeah, I mean, it's hard, hard to think about just how far outside the mainstream she is. On one hand, yes, the, the gold standard comments, and yeah. she gets very technical when it comes to her thinking about whether interest rates should be higher, talks right, about right. excess reserves on banks. But on the other hand, you know, she, she's got a Ph.D. in business administration. She's at a lot of these meetings that you and I have gone to with economists. She's very close friends with Robert Mundell, who's a, PhD, who's a Nobel laureate in economics. So... I'm not sure how far out of the box she is. Um, I, I think the concern is the political. And I think the issue, Sarah, becomes the changes she's made in her attitudes about the exact same policies given the administration that's been in office. Uh, if you look at what she thought about reducing rates, she said that's only uh, reducing rates during the Obama administration. She said, well, that's only for the wealthy few. And just recently with an interview with Rick Santelli, she said, well, look at all the people who have money in the stock market, half of Americans, and we should lower rates to help them. And she's also said her that her support for lower rates is conditioned upon the fiscal policy. That's the concern. I also, Sarah, have an answer. I just want to show you something that we put together about those nominees the president has gotten in and those he hasn't. Uh, and there's been four nominees that have been in, uh, but three who have kind of withdrawn or otherwise been rejected. They, they, they personally withdrew good friend. Uh, Kane and more as well. The ones on the left are in, the ones on the right didn't get in. There was a change, Sarah, in how the administration, I think, handled these nominations. Some of these were at the, you know, with, were consulting with people at the Fed, with the chair, normal traditional practice to consult, and some were kind of outside the box. They appeared to change the process by which they chose these nominees uh, somewhere in the middle of the Trump administration. So, Steve, do you, you see her as a return to that prior batch, uh, that prior tranche that were successful because they tended to go through more political uh, protocols? I, I don't think so. I think, I think Shelton is more in line of the kind of outliers. And look, f the Fed believes that you can have one or two people. I think the concern is, and a lot of people have said, you know, what if uh, the president turns around in 2022 uh, if he's reelected and makes uh, Shelton the chair? How much, I, how much I, independence would there be? I also wonder if there's more scrutiny just because this president has been so critical of the Fed chairman, Jay Powell, and has people thinking, well, well, maybe whoever he puts on the Fed will be next in line for that job if he wins exactly. re-election, Steve. Exactly. But, but you're right in the sense that, you know, she has some defined and definite uh, and interesting uh, economic views, and, and that's not necessarily uh, bad for the Federal Reserve. The question becomes uh, whether or not they're, they're tenable ideas. All right. We have our eyes peeled on Senate banking today, Steve. Thanks.